Yeah, good morning folks. Catherine here, your On The Spot reporter. It's uh, Tuesday the 6th of November 2020. It's around about 11am. Here we are at 14 Nova Place. The uh, dead end street here with the bridge club at the end. And uh, in between this uh, block of units here to the right and a single dwelling to the left there. There's this empty section, which one assumes had a house here. It's got a street and it's got a letterbox still. Uh, assuming the house was damaged during the earthquakes of 2010 and 2011 and subsequently demolished, and nothing else has been put in its place. We're going to listen to the glorious sound of an alarm ringing its head off as I furiously struggle with my left hand to turn it off. And uh, we're walking along. There's some olive trees here, and there's five of them. Um, there's some big thing behind it. I think that's just natives. I had a look behind. Um, it would seem that somebody comes here at least occasionally. And as you see, the, I won't say the grass has been recently mowed, but it's, you know, they've obviously kept woody weeds down and things like that. So I guess they come in here a couple of times a year and mow it. And, but uh, yeah, so we've got five olive trees here, a good size. And then there's a gap in between where you can walk through a bit further behind. And if you're looking at the different coloured foliage at the top there above the olive trees, I think that's a New Zealand native, I don't know what it's called, I see it everywhere. It's got a slightly wrinkly leaf and I just don't know what it is, but it's uh, evergreen. And there are several of those trees in the back. Um, the olives, the olive trees, are, I won't say they look a picture of health, the leaves look a bit skinny to me, but I realise that there'll be some variation between um, the, in, in leaf width. Now obviously this isn't dry as places in like Australia or Portugal or certain other places where they grow olives. But um, I believe Christchurch uh, annual rainfall about 700, 800 mil a year, something like that. And often with a very dry summer. But not as hot as Australia or Portugal or those other Mediterranean climates. So we, we sort of... <coughs> Uh, not a COVID cough, that's right. Uh, so yeah, Christchurch and parts of Canterbury sort of straddly line between um, temperate and uh, and wannabe Mediterranean, but not quite. Uh, but yeah, they look healthy. I don't know if they give good crops of olives. Um, I guess you'd have to pick them up off the ground. Uh, a few discarded branches and that here. <coughs> it's another cough. And... Um, it rises up there um, a little bit, not much. I mean, this is a flat area. Uh, I, I guess we're, uh, yeah, the rivers, I, I'm looking south at the moment and behind me is heading north. Um, so I guess this over in, in you know, prehistoric times, the, 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 the river is to my north. So that could account for some undulations in the land. Uh, there's ivy everywhere. I don't know if it'll show up. I'll, I'll just take a step inside this uh, this area here. And you can see the ivy has formed a very dense ground cover, a big tangled mess of ground cover, which I guess is not totally a bad thing. Uh, but this back area is uh, about two feet or about half a metre higher. Um, a couple of cat New Zealand cabbage trees, uh, Livus cordyline australis um, in there. But uh, we'll just back out carefully. Um, yeah, so here we go, five olive trees. They seem to be healthy. So there's probably a few olives here if someone picked them at the right time or whatever. Um, obviously olives are evergreen. But uh, yeah, there we go. Number 14 over place here in, um, I guess it's still the central city. Yeah, we're still inside the four avenues, so it's the central city. Uh, not quite the Avon Loop or Richmond, but uh, yes, this piece of land, which uh, I'm not sure of the valuation on this piece of land is probably uh, close to half a million dollars, but uh, it doesn't mean much to somebody. They don't uh, they don't want to sell it, rent it out, let housing be built on it, or whatever. They're happy for it just to sit here. So that's the situation, and we've got uh, well. I was going to say some modern built flats, I guess about 20 years ago, that, that kind of style, uh, on that side. And what would be referred to by a real estate agent as a character home. 
is in a sort of a what, 1930s to 50s build just from what little I can see a tile roof and uh, the cladding on the outside with those windows yeah I think that's more like about 1950s style so uh, yeah what was here I don't know um, I, I may have walked past this at some point before the earthquakes but I certainly don't remember what was here um, I'm guessing it was a house probably a brick house that was demolished after the earthquakes so that's looking southwards if we slowly turn around to the east there's the Christchurch British Club from what I hear it's quite nice they've got their car park and somewhere around here is a development happening looking out towards uh, that's Barbados Street the one-way system there and uh, some a block of units there by the look of it in the distance just but uh, just to the left of that block of units is the Pico Whole Foods the organic food shop okay folks that's all for now cheerio